contemporary circus artist, uh, an aerial acrobat. I work in this uh, zero gravity company. We, we were founded in, in 2010 um, after graduating in Turku University of Applied Sciences Circus Studies. And um, yeah, uh, my main discipline back in school was aerial rope. And uh, for some, some uh, certain events, I started free diving as well for uh, one performance. We wanted to make an underwater video projection, and, um, and so I started free diving. And then um, the water got on stage, <laughs> and then uh, I took the performance underwater via uh, camera, but yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm combining aerials and underwater movement. And yeah, that's about me. Um, but for now, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about traditions, since that was the theme of, of this month. And um, I asked my dear online friend, uh, Merriam Webster Dictionary, <laughs> about tradition. And this is why, what it said. Tradition is an inherited, established, or customary pattern of thought, action, or behavior. A belief, or story, or a body of beliefs, or stories relating to the past that are commonly accepted as historical, though not verifiable. The handing down of information, beliefs, and customs by word of mouth, or by example, from one generation to another without written instruction. Cultural continuity in social attitudes, customs, and institutions. Characteristic manner, method, or style. And uh, to have something to compare with, I chose modern. And, and Merriam-Webster uh, describes modern like this. Of, relating to, or characteristic of the present, or the immediate past, of, relating to, or characteristic of a period extending from a relevant remote past to the present time, involving recent techniques, methods, or ideas. And to com combine or uh, compare even more and to relate this to the field that I work at or with is contemporary. And Again, back to Merriam-Webster. <laughs> Contemporary, marked by characteristics of the present period. Happening, existing, living or coming into being during the same period of time. And now back to tradition. We go to uh, circus traditions. Uh, like all of you, of course, know uh, circus has its tradition like in the ancient times, the fools and the clowns and, and such. But not to make this a, a circus tradition lesson, uh, we, we will talk about circus tradition starting in the 18th century and the, the history of the ring that was established in, in uh, 18th century. It was especially made for horse riding shows and acrobatic skill acts. And, and the ring tradition varied itself uh, until early early 1900s, um, from the variety of acrobatic skill shows and horse riding to freak shows, uh, bodily anomalies uh, such as bearded women, uh, skill shows such as strong men or strong women, and um, entertainment based on on the strange, different, and abnormal. And yeah, <laughs> these are just images that I found, but, but I'm, I'm especially attracted to this one. This is a, a picture of, of uh, aerialist acrobats from around 1920s. And then uh, we take a fast forward to modern circus. Uh, circus was, was popular until uh, it got displaced by TV and radio. And, and, and started by the economical crisis in the late 1920s. And from there, it slowly grew back to its, its full glory uh, until 1990s, when maybe most of you know uh, Cirque du Soleil was uh, established. 
but a lot happened in the in the cultural field and the atmosphere um, from uh, strong men and strong women from the skill-based body types uh, the so-called ideal circus body had been formed uh, it was a generic all things possible human being, human machine. Strong, flexible, slim, not too tall, not too, not too large, and, and um, funnily, in such a strict shape form that it was easily replaced in case of an injury, for example. And um, Taking a, a few decades back in time to the 70s and, and to Europe, to France, um, a new form of, of circus started to emerge that later has been called contemporary. And it, it escaped from the ring to the theater and, and um, picked some elements from theater and dance and, and live music to itself and, and went to the theater hall. But it hasn't been that contemporary in terms of, of bodily norms. Um, and circus, as well as, as gymnastics, acrobatic gymnastics, ballet, have been all poisoned with this very strict and even sick body image and, and ideal, sick diets, Cases of young women being too fat if they have their periods normally. Um, <laughs> diets of, of, of 1600 calories per day when working out on like twice or three times a day, eating disorder deaths. And I'm not the one to tell you why. Maybe it's fashion industry. Maybe it's the internet, patriarchy, tradition. It, anyway, definitely has nothing to do with talent or skill or ability or the least giftedness. I personally don't believe in, in such foolishness as someone being gifted. I wasn't gifted to aerial acrobatics or free diving, holding my breath when I was a kid. I was this kid running around and, and, and climbing in trees because I, I thought it was fun. And a few weeks ago, I read a, this article about the um, gym, gymnastic team, uh, the national team of Finland, and their, their coach and their dietary um, suggestions and and um, there was this certain certain thing about about a diet dietary um, guide guideline of a teenage athlete working out two times a day having um, being suggested to eat six grapes as a snack before going to bed six grapes and I mean that's sick I, I hope you, you, you agree with me, that's a bit sick. Um, and the sad thing was, I, I wasn't even surprised. I was, I was very glad that it, it, it had been written and published. And the article reminded me of, of the time when I studied circus. Uh, I had a certain aerial teacher from a uh, certain very famous um, world popular circus, <laughs> uh, who in this University of Pl Applied Sciences 10 years ago uh, during the aerial class mid pull-up training said, so you can think whether the piece of chocolate was worth it or not. We were suggested to be uh, weighed before entering class. Um, we were giving, given dietary restrictions. And I'm not saying this to make you feel bad for every gymnast or circus artist or ballet dancer. I'm saying this because I'm outraged 
for this eating and body shape disor disordered culture. Especially if it comes from the neo tradition. This is still happening right now under our very eyes, not only in Russia or, or China, it's happening in Europe, in, in the US, it's happening in Finland. Meanwhile, in other parts of, of the world, people are dying of hunger. And it's, it, it makes me very sad and speechless. But we are still talking about this. And, and it means something. Uh, the sick way of working that somehow became a new tradition is being criticized and rebelled. It's a beginning of change. It has to be. The neo-traditional methods of weight watching and body norms might die hard, but we do have good actions and discussions going on on our field. There are seminars, discussions, publications on, on intersection and intersectionality, um, body type analysis in a way that um, is inclusive, not like um, not um, analyzing only the ideal body norm. These things have been on the table in the dance field. And now they've started to sprout also in circus field. Circus, even though it's traditionally been um, an escape from the, from the usual world, it cannot escape today. It's, what's happening in the world is happening in circus as well. And it gives me hope. We see uh, elderly athletes. We see dancers in wheelchairs. So if people with different bodies can become athletes, why couldn't they become physical performers? Artists. Wouldn't it be just as interesting or even more to see a person with age, bodily constraints, disabilities, than just the generic all able being without any characteristics. Could we, find, could we find the comfort and uplift watching physical art from abilities of different people, not only the overhumane? Could we see the ability, not the disability? I do realize that I'm saying this with the voice of an athletic, 30, almost one-year-old, white, um, Nordic woman. With the privilege of, of working as an artist in Finland, with our social security and all. It, it, yeah, I do realize that. Um, but still, funny and, and first world problematic, it may seem. Um, this woman right here has been fighting a vast amount of, of tradition-based self-loathe and downhanded hatred towards the lack of self-discipline. And, and I'm not alone with this, I can say. And I'm not getting any younger, nor much more flexible or explosively dynamic. But I'm not going anywhere. I've decided not to go anywhere. Even though our, our field would still glorify the young and the all able body for some time, there's a lot of us who are not going to go anywhere. There's a lot of us whose greatest artistic mission is not only to stay on the field, to keep on going and to maintain and fix, uh, find new things, but also 
to rewrite the tra traditions. Someday this movement, I hope, what is going on now, will be the new tradition. And I'm curious to see where we're going and hopeful. Thank you.